Good evening. Good evening. It's almost that time. We I think we have about five minutes, but I don't want to, you to be surprised by the atmosphere. I, I have double duty taking my granddaughter to basketball practice, sometimes 6.30 in the morning as well as 5 in the evening, but uh, that doesn't stop the Word of God. You know, in season, out of season, maybe this is one of the out of seasons, I don't know, but I just know that I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. As the Bible says, to the Jew first and then the Greek. I'm thankful that uh, God is allowing me to partake of his word and to instruct others in the way of righteousness. And I'm thankful for those of you that have been faithful for quite some time now. Excuse me, I'm trying to find my keys in case I need to quieten down these students that pass by and, and, and turn on air conditioning, but we will be in First uh, Corinthians 12 and Ephesians 4. Actually, we will in reality be in First Corinthians uh, chapters 12 through 14 bef before this thing ends, but uh, I think it's necessary that we understand who we are and, and whose we are in the body of Christ. Good evening, Sister Brenda. So glad to see you. Uh, you went to New York. Now do you eat chicken with a fork? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm thankful that you were able to get away and receive a you know, sometime. And I'm still fighting against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. And if necessary, I will move this car to a different location because this is this is not going to stop God's program and I, I'm I'm going to pray now and I, I father God is again in the name of Jesus that I come to come to you come boldly to the throne of grace to make my petitions known forgive me Lord for my sins my shortcomings sins of Commission, sins of omissions, and Lord, even some thoughts I might have entertained unaware, but Father, anything contrary to your word, cast it out as far as the east is from the west, that I might be an anointed vessel fit for the Master's use. And Father, as I always ask, please take me out of self, hide me behind the cross of Calvary, and never let my flesh be on parade. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Hey, Sister Nadine, I, I was waiting for you guys to, to let me know uh, where in Charlotte and what time uh, your family, family member's funeral would be. And, I'm not saying I'll be there, but I, but I would be I can be praying in the process because you you know I'm not gonna put it out there on Facebook that I'm praying because I I do that and I don't have to make that announcement. But uh, uh, you know that I, I love uh, you and your family and you and I'm praying that your trip from Virginia to Charlotte be a safe one. We're going to talk about something that. Well, I'm not saying it's very rarely discussed. It's just that I haven't heard it discussed. I'll put it that way. And that's uh, spiritual gifts. I, I put on Facebook, you know, what's missing in the worship building that you call a church? No, we are the church. We are the church. The body of Christ is the church. But I'm talking about when the saints uh, get together what is your purpose why do we do what we do what 
do we go to have a good time? I mean, what's what's this all about? What is, you know, whatever day of worship you choose, it, because it, it doesn't really matter. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But do you worship him in spirit and in truth? It's not, it's not always about worship. What do you do when that hour and a half, two hours is over on Sunday or Saturday, whatever day you choose to worship? What, what, what do we do? What, what is our purpose? Because we're a chosen people. And God has put us here on earth to do work. And if you don't understand, we're not saved by our works. But we're saved to work. We're saved to work. I'm really spiritually tired of folks saying, well, we... Had a good time in church today. Okay. Uh, what was your purpose? Now, are we praise and worship? Yeah, I know, I know. You're supposed to enter into his gates with what? Thanksgiving and unto his courts with praise. But you're not praising him and worshiping him during that whole experience. At least, uh, not according to the word. You... He said to learn of me. It's not the the church is not a place where we come to do our own thing. It's where we come to do God's thing. God's thing. What happened? What your experience with God? What happened after you came to Him and He became your Savior and Lord? Did Everything just stopped now. We're just going to go to church and have a good time. No, no, no. It's We are saved to work. And God gives us everything that we need to do, to do his will on earth. And I asked you to uh, take a look at both Ephesians 4 and 1 Corinthians 12 because we're going to talk about Spiritual gifts, those two chapters, they complement each other, if, if you'll read it. And, and both are written by the Apostle Paul, and they deal with the same issue, spiritual gifts. Now, I'm, on, I'm going to read from Ephesians because Paul begins Ephesians by referring to what God has done for those who trusted in his Son. Now, let's look at verses 1 through 6, and you will find that the worthy Christian walk that he's, that he's talking about, the walk is carried out through the ministry of the gift that he has given us. The ministry of the gift. We all have gifts, every one of us. Now, let's go to Ephesians 4, and, and I'm, I'm hoping... Good evening. That's my other sister, Brenda. Good to see you. Go to Ephesians, the fourth chapter. And, and I'm not going to rush through this thing about, about spiritual gifts. We, we're not going to be in this as long as we were in Revelation. But we need to understand our position, what the Lord has called us to do as a body. Now, let's look at, let's, let's look at Ephesians 4. And when Paul entered, he, he introduces himself as what? A prisoner of the Lord. And he's telling each member to walk worthy of the vocation which you're called. The work in which you're called. You're called to work. Not just to sit down by the banks of the river and, 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 and just sit in, in church for a feel good. We, are, we have a vocation. We have work to do. And how do we do it? 
Look at verse 2. With all lowliness and meekness and, lo and long suffering, putting up with them, folk, forbearing one another <laughs> in love. If you want to know what the evidence of the Holy Ghost is, there you have it. Love. Jesus said, by this, good evening, Sheila, good to see you. By this, men shall know that you're my disciples, that you have love one for another. It has nothing to do with good works or, or, or speaking in tongues as some folk Folk have got it wrong because they spoke with other tongues on the day of Pentecost, not in tongues, but that. But we'll deal with that also. But but we are we are called to work, and it's not ironic. Jesus said, "But this man should know that you're my disciples." And and the first of the nine fruit of the spirit is love, and after love you have joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Meekness and temperance, all of that comes from loving one another. And when we are true to Christ, you know, brothers and sisters in the Lord, Galatians 6, verse 1 and 2 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, and he doesn't have to necessarily be saved, but, but he, he might be a weak Christian, if he be overtaken in a fault, Ye which are spiritual, ye which are saved, ye which have the Holy Ghost, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill you the law of Christ. And what's the law of Christ? There it is again, love. Good evening, said. Good, good, good to see you. I was waiting for you. <laughs> now let's go back to let's go back to uh, Ephesians four. Look, look at look at the third verse. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. If God has gifted all of us to keep peace, it's a bond. We're one, and we're to keep unity. Why? Verse 4. Because there's one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. All of us. That applies to us all. It's not just the preacher. You, you, some, sometimes you lay too much on the pastor when you're not utilizing the gift that God has given you, and, and one of those gifts that we'll talk about is help. I feel like that's one of the greatest gifts is help. Jethro helped Moses. He strengthened Moses. We can be strengthened. We can strengthen one another just by helping. And then there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Unity. Unity. One God, and Father of all, who is above all, and in you all, in you all. Now, verse 7 applies to me, you, and every child of God. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of God. According to the measure. You might not be able to handle what I've got. And I might not be handling what you got. So he gives us a measure, a measure, a measure of grace. And, and the grace that he gives us is sufficient. Your grace is sufficient. <laughs> I see my sister Dora and my brother-in-law Sonny. Thank you from Philadelphia. I'm not Philadelphia. I'm sorry, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining me. 
What did Jesus do when in, in this eighth verse of Ephesians four? What did he do when he when he brought those folk up out of the grave? That's that's what we took captivity captive. What what happened the moment that he presented those individuals to the Father? What did he do to for individuals on earth? He gave gifts freely, gifts to men, gifts to men and women. That's when, because now that he ascended. Okay, he, he also ascended the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that descended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. He's in the heaven of heavens. Now remember, on his, I think it's in Matthew 6, I don't know, but on his way to Caesar Philippi, Jesus asked his disciples a question, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they gave many answers. You know, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Moses. But Jesus emphatically asked the question, but who, not, not men, I'm not concerned now what men, who, who they say I am, who do you say that I am? And Peter answered the question, Thou art Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said what? Upon this rock, not Peter, but upon that statement, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Okay, when he ascended on high, what he started building the church. It was not built before he left. It didn't happen. Because when he led captivity captive, look at verse eleven, he gave gifts he gave gifts to men, and what did he give them? Some apostles and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some, and notice this is a dual role, pastors and teachers. If you can't teach, you're not a pastor. Because we are to, we are to show people the way of salvation. And, and, and the, the question was asked, how can you hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he be sent, sent by God? Not mama called, not daddy called. I, just because your dad is a preacher, uh, don't make you one. My dad was a mechanic, but I ain't, don't ask me to work on your cars. What I'm saying is called of God. And what what is our purpose? Why did God give these gifts? What was the purpose of the gifts? Verse 12, for the perfecting. The, are the completion, part of the for perfecting of the saints, for what? For what? The work of the ministry. And for the edifying, the lifting up of the body of Christ. Until, okay, he's building the church. Until we come in the unity of the faith. The unity of the faith. Come together. And, and to what? Not just the faith, but the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect or a complete man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In Colossians 2, it says, In him, in Christ, dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So those of you that are fighting over baptism and everything, when Jesus comes in, that's all you get. Mary, Mary, you can sing that song all you want to. I need a little more Jesus. No, he's not. He, it's complete. In him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily, which means in him, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. When you were saved, you immediately received the Holy Ghost and was transferred into the kingdom of God spiritually. And you folks that are making up this stuff, mourners, benches, and and spitting on each other, you know, trying, Jesus, 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 it doesn't work like that. By faith are you saved through faith, and it's not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Why are you at a mourner's bench begging for a gift? You don't have to beg for a gift. 
He said, I freely give. And for you individuals that, in, that, that people are making you unsure of your relationship with Christ, uh, you don't have to worry about what they say. You worry about what God says. If God says you're saved, you're saved and you're sealed until the day of redemption. Does that mean you, you don't, you don't, sin, don't sin? No, not every time when you sin, but the inner man, the spirit in you, that seed in you cannot sin. The seed, the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost and you cannot sin. The flesh does. But you are sealed and even the, the, the times when it seems like you're going to fall, and fall, you will never hit the ground because unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Ah! Hey, 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 hey. And present you faultless as if you never did anything wrong because what you have is the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. He does not see God. The, the father does not see you. He sees his son's righteousness that is covering you. He is the, ah, ah, hey. ah, ah, ah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Mm. Ah. He is the propitiation. He is the covering. Can you see my face? No. No, you couldn't see it because he is the covering. He covers me. He not only walks with me and talks with me, he covers me. <laughs> oh, help me, Jesus. Help me, Jesus. I'm trying to stay in character. I'm trying to stay in character, but the Holy Ghost is in this car. You hear me? Ah. We've got to come to a knowledge. I'm going to talk about spiritual gifts, but I've got to build this platform. You've got to know where they came from, what they're for, how they exist. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, because you've got to come to unity in what you believe, what you believe, why you believe it. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Come on. Hallelujah. <laughs> Me too, baby. <but laughs> Help me till we've got to get it together. Unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God. Read First Corinthians 2. Gain that wisdom. Get that knowledge of God. Because once you get that wisdom, that's what that verse means. The eye has not seen, ear has not heard, neither has entered the hearts of men. The things the Lord has prepared for them that love him. Your eyes are open. You, 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 you have discernment now. And the very last two verses says you can actually judge because you have the mind of Christ. The natural man can't do that. But when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the, oh, God, help me, Jesus. These things are spiritually discerned. You're able to see things that, 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 that the world can't see. Someone asked me on Facebook, you being judgmental? I said, yes, and, and good at it. Yes, I am. I have the right to judge. According to 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, those last two verses, because I have the mind of Christ. I'm not judging by my mentality, but he that is in me, that's greatest in the world, he reveals. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm, I'm about to jump out of this car. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, to the measure <laughs> and the stature. Of the fullness of Christ. You know who you are? Do you know who you are? You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the Holy Ghost. He walks in you. He talks to you. He's always renewing your mind. Everywhere you go, he goes. Even though you, you might go and, and, and do something crazy, but he's going with you. When you do something crazy, you might grieve him, but he ain't going nowhere because you are sealed unto the day of, rede of redemption. He did not give temporary life. He gave everlasting life. Everlasting. What he has done is done forever. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. And watch this, watch, watch this crazy teaching because you can tell a child anything they believe it. But in, in Ephesians 4 and 14, 
from from this time on, henceforth, don't be don't be childish, don't be no children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight or that's tricks by the tricks of men, and cover, and, and cunning craftiness, the cleverness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive you. You know these 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 jitterbugs are lying lying. Sow a seed, sow a seed. They, I'm a man of God. I'm supposed to be sowing the seed. The seed is the word of God, not a dollar bill, not a George Washington. Not, it is the, oh, help me, Holy Ghost. The seed. I'm sowing seed right now, and it's gathering fruit. But these jitterbugs that are telling you, Get in a ten dollar line, a twenty dollar line, a fifty dollar line. They are liars, straight from hell. I don't care, you, bishop, pastor. You can call yourself anything you want to. You are a liar, straight from hell. God has appointed us to sow the seed, which is the word of God. But these guys are crafty, Peter. Papa Nafa, whatever, Papa, Papa, so whatever, whatever. No. But see, I'm speaking the truth because I love you. And what does verse 15 say? Speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love. And that causes growth. Grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. You're growing in Christ. Thank you, Sister Sheila. Pop head, pop off. Yeah, he pop, popping off the mouth and don't know what he's talking about. And got crazy folk following him. Children, false doctrine, want to get a blessing. You're alive, that is a blessing. Now, uh, look at verse 16. From whom the whole body fitly cement it, joined together, and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part. In other words, every part, every part of the body is doing something. This eye is seeing, but this finger can't, but it can grasp. This mouth is talking, but this ear can't. It has to hear. But they're working in harmony. Until the church of God works in harmony, these gifts will never, never be in effect. Because we are one body, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all. Get it together. We've got the unity. Unity. <laughs> now, Working the measure of every part. Making increase of the body. We increase. The, the body increase. The body of Christ increase. Unto the edifying of itself in love. Lord, I don't know if I'm going to get to Romans 12. Now, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll do it Friday. This, I'm, I'm, I'm going to deal with Ephesians. But we cannot deal with the gifts in, 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 in uh, I'm sorry, I said Romans First Corinthians twelve, till we get this in our, we got to get this in our body, in our spirit. Paul says something in verse seventeen that I hope y'all read this whole chapter when, when again when I get off here. This I say therefore, verse seventeen, and testify in the Lord that from this moment don't walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated, I mean set apart from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. Don't let ignorant folk lead you. Be because of the blindness that's in their heart, if they're blind and leading you, you're blind too. Blind leading the blind. Ray Charles lead, leading Stevie Wonder. Boy, that's, that, that, now, now that's, that's a pretty sight, ain't it? The blind leading the blind. Because of the ignorance is in their heart. And 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 look at look at the past in verse 19. 
who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work of all uncleanness, greediness. We've got some greedy folks in the pulpit. And not just in the pulpit, in the church. Given over to sinful practices. But verse 20 says, we're not, we're not supposed to do that. But ye have not so learned of Christ. If be so that ye have learned him, heard, have heard him, and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concern the former conversation or the former life of the old man, which is what? Corrupt according to deceitful lust. You're supposed to be supposed to be changed. If any man or woman be in Christ Jesus, he is a new cre creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's just a reasonable thing to do. And what? Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Get rid of that nasty mind. Be renewed. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we will prove what the good and perfect will of God is. But it has to be a mind change. Verse 24, because we put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Everybody that's saying holy ain't holy. Just because you say, we're talking about true holiness. True holiness is, is following God. We're, oh, Lord, here we go. Wherefore, put away, put away lying. <laughs> Even in our songs, we are climbing Jacob's ladder. Jacob didn't have a ladder. And we don't climb. We are raptured. And it wasn't a ladder anyway. The Greek, it was a spiral staircase. And the angels were able to ascend and descend at the same time. Okay. I'm going to put on my robe, tell the story as a lie. The saints of God put on fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. The robe is for martyrs. The robe is for individuals that miss the rapture and go through the tribulation period. And some, some of them hear the, the, teach, the teaching and preaching of the 144,000 virgin men. And after, and after that, they don't accept the mark or the number of the beast. And they are martyred and given robes. They are given robes. Robes are for martyrs, not for children of God. The fine linen is our righteousness when we become the bride and the wife of God himself. Put on your robe. Uh, I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Did he not tell you to speak to that mountain and be thou removed, but you're going to do your own thing? Oh, I've got more. I've got more, but I'm just showing we can sing a lie as well as tell a lie. And, and some of the hymns, oh, Lord. Talk, talk about, uh, what, is, what is it? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not even going there. I'm going to leave the hymns alone. I'm going to leave it alone. I ain't going there. Uh Speak every man the truth with, with his neighbor. And see, folk tell me I don't have any tact. It's not that I don't have tact. I'm going to tell you the truth, and you were, you were expecting something else. I've got a reputation. If you don't want the truth, don't ask Robert Bryan because I'm going to tell you the truth. So when you ask me another time, I'll tell you the same thing. And if you keep on messing with me, I'll see if there's any more in that truth that I didn't tell you. And you will, you, you will definitely get it the next time. We speak the, I speak the truth in love. In love. Why? Because we are members. Thank you, Sister, Sister Johnson. M members one for another. I ain't got time. Scratch your own ears. Scratch them. Because I ain't going to itch. I, I'm, they're not going to itch from Robert Brown. It's not, it ain't going to happen. Be ye angry and sin not. I folks tell me, man, you, you look like you was angry. 
preacher ain't, ain't supposed to get angry. I said, well, you tell Jesus that when he turned over them tables. You, and it didn't say, don't be angry. It said, be, you, be angry, but sin not. See, that Marine from 1968 to 1970 is just taking a nap inside of me. Be careful how you approach me. Use common sense. Because if you hit me, I'm going to turn the other cheek. Yours. Use common sense. Be ye angry and sin not. Let the sun, don't let the sun go down in your wrath. Don't, is it just me or have you been in church when folk come through the church and sit down and just look right mean, look like they got a, 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 a um, mouth, mouth full of marbles trying to suck lemon out of a straw. Just fix your face. Come on. We are supposed to be happy people. Don't let the sun go down in your wrath. And neither give place to the devil because he comes to church too. You bought him. The devil cannot come to church without transportation. The transportation is a body, a human body. Just like he needed a body in the Garden of Eden, he used the serpent. He needed a human body that was at the table with Jesus. His name was Judas. He can only move if you give him transportation. So don't give him place. He can't get in you, but he can attach himself to you. Don't let the devil ride. That means he's attached. If you stole, don't steal anymore. Pay your tithe. I'm not, I'm sorry, give your tithe. It ain't yours. That's God's. Uh... <laughs> Oh, that's another study. But rather let him labor. Working with his own hands, the thing which is good, that he may have to give him that needeth. I think, thank you, God, for blessing me to do that. No, I'm not a rich man. But he blesses me, me to give, and I'm not going to tell you who I gave to. You, because that would kill my blessing. Now, now. Here we go, because I'm guilty. I'm guilty of this one. Because sometimes the words that come out of my mouth are not holy. But you a man of God. No, yeah, but the man, the, the fleshly man, the body that I'm living in, sometimes he wants to tell you where to go, when to go, how to go, and what you can do after you get there because you've been messing with me. Now, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. I have to ask God to forgive me. Lord, I did it again. I want to clean his clock. Ugh. That marine in me. Just, uh, but that which is good to the use of edifying. See, I, I had to clean that mess up. Pastors, we need to ask for forgiveness too. We ain't so suchy much. We're not so suchy much. We live in a fleshly body. Yes, we sin. Not habitually, I hope not, anyway. But we need to constantly be looking at ourselves. I'm my worst enemy. I am my worst enemy. I work on me more than anybody on the face of this earth. I, if, if I do that, then I can, uh, the last part of that verse 29, the gift is, Minister grace unto the hearers. See, you wonder why I came out, out of my mouth with all that. Well, you read, you read James 5 about any sick of mine, you call for the elders of the church and all that. But you don't read the, the next verse. It says, confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that you might be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. Our problem is we don't want to confess and, th and that, that weight is with us, but we're supposed to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets us. Oh, Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. And don't grieve the Holy Spirit. See, if I hadn't asked for forgiveness, I'd be grieving him. 
I would still have the Holy Spirit, but he's not happy with me. Don't grieve him. Don't make him unhappy. Where do you go? What do you put in your body? How do you talk? Do you study to show yourself approved? He gets upset. I dare not try to teach you with my own knowledge. That would grieve him. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed. I told you. Sealed unto the day of redemption. In other, in other words, my grandma used to can all kind of stuff. Once she canned it and sealed it, it couldn't get out. It couldn't get out the side, the top, and nothing could get in. Why? Because that's what we are. My life is hid with Christ in God. You can't, you can't, if I had something in my hand, you couldn't see it because it's sealed. Two things. My life is hid with Christ in God. The only thing you're going to see is God. The God in me. The hope of glory. Now, that all bitterness. See, I'm trying to help you so, so you be prepared for the gifts we're going to talk about in chapter 12. Bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking. Oh, Lord. Put it away with all malice. Don't be so mean. But what? Be kind one to another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another, even as Christ, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. God did it because of his son. Everything on that cross was, was our sin. Christ became sin for us. He became a curse for us. And that's, that's why God has forgiven us because of his son. Now, this is how your life is supposed to be if you want a want the spiritual gifts to be imparted to you. So, because Paul assured us in Ephesians verses 7 through 11 that every believer, every believer, has been individually gifted. I said individually gifted. We don't all have the same gifts by God, and God gives both grace and the faith to energize whatever gift he gives to the intent of his purpose, not your purpose. Not your purpose. If he gives you a gift, he's going to give you the energy. The energy is the dunamis. The dunamis is, is, is the dynamite. The dynamite is the Holy Ghost. He's going to give you the Holy Ghost to utilize that gift. He's going to energize it to fulfill his purpose. Now, since gifts are given to us by God, none of them should be unused. They shouldn't be unused, and, and we shouldn't exalt ourselves because they're, they're his gifts, his gifts for us. We each have a gift that is measured to us. I'm, 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 I'm going to get in. We, we're going to go through uh, the 12th chapter of 1 Corinthians in big time. Each of us, I said, each of us should use a gift. The gift is measured out to us because he knows what we can handle and what we can't handle. And each of us is given a specific gift to which we are to minister in Christ's name. Go to 1 Peter 4 and 10. What are we required to do with that gift. What are we required to do with our gift? I 
Are you there? As every man has received the gift, even so, minister the, the same, the same gift, one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. You don't own the gift. You are stewards. We are stewards. I've been preaching 50 years, but I don't own the gift. I am a steward of the gift of preaching, teaching, exaltation. I minister. The, <laughs> I'm one of the stewards of the manifold. It's many stewards of the manifold grace of God. So, You've got gifts too. We can't put it out on the on the preacher. I, I I have problems with that. I have problem problem with that. Now, <laughs> let's let's look at let's look at some let's look at let's look at some. Go to First uh, Corinthians the twelfth chapter. I'm gonna have to leave shortly. These football players have got out. And then, matter of fact, I got a cure. It ain't nothing but another trick of the devil. I done lost my keys, but that's all right. That's all right. Uh, when you read the 12th chapter, good question. Good question. The, Sister Lois said, how do I know what my gift is? God should reveal it to you. Because we're going to talk about many gifts. Gift of help. Gifts, plural. Of healings, plural. Okay. Matter of fact, let's, 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 let's go to that. Let's, let's go to that. What... Uh, go to the go to the fourth verse of of this chapter chapter 2 there are varieties of gifts there are varieties varieties but what the same spirit there are varieties of ministries didn't say gifts ministries but the same lord there are varieties of effects but the same god who works all things in all persons do we need to read that again There are varieties of gifts. There are varieties of gifts. And varieties of, of what? No, varieties of gifts, but it says the, the same spirit. I'm going to show you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost work together. Same spirit. The varieties of ministries. The same Lord. It didn't say spirit. It says same Lord. The varieties of effects. But the same God. Who works all things in all persons. The Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost works together. In everybody. And I told you that in Christ dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And when he... When you were saved, that fullness came into you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So inside of you, uh, you will see the, you might see the variety of, of gifts, ministries, and effects. This is going to take some time. The Lord said that was a very good question. You always ask good, good questions. I called the Lord. So I've known her. I ain't going to tell. But 60s. Uh, now. 
this what does it mean? What what what? This is a variety. What's variety mean? The, the the spirit gives capacities for spiritual ministry. We are given these things to strengthen others. It, it says now there are varieties of gifts but the same spirit. Gifts. Are they I don't like using these seminary words, but charisma, gifts. That means gift of grace or free gift. And because there's the gift of salvation, there's the blessings of God, there's enablements for ministry, and there's uh, divine in, in, in enablements for believers to minister in the power of the Holy Spirit. Congregation, let me talk to you. If that person that you call have called to pastor does not have the Holy Spirit, I don't care if he's fresh out of the seminary, leave him right where he is because the church is the body of Christ Jesus being the head, you don't need anything outside of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost trying to minister anything. Spiritual gifts are not talents. They are not talents. An unbeliever has talents. An atheist or agnostic, agnostic has talents. You can excel in a lot of things and they just be talents, but... but Spiritual gifts come only as the result of salvation, of being born again. Gifts are given by God. I said gifts are given by God for his people, his sanctified folk. They are set apart. Spiritual gifts are given always to believers without exception. Let me read. I done closed that Bible, but, but what does that seventh, seventh verse say? 12 and 7. I need to be back in gay life where Chris, Chris could be reading this stuff for me. Okay, 12 and 7. Why are you given that gift? But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit. Not for himself, but other people. Gifts, Sister Dolores, gifts are not gifts. Until we open the box. I, I, I don't do Christmas. Y'all know that. I don't do that. But, but in the giving of the gifts. You see boxes. Those boxes are not gifts. What is inside the box. Is the gift. Huh. Uh. So in Timothy, if you want to know what your gift is, you got to stir some things up. Stir up, stir up the gift of God that's in you. Stir it up. Stir things up. Talk to God. A lot of times, your gift is something that you don't want. God knows Robert Bobby Brown didn't want to preach. My sister can tell you, I wasn't preaching material. Trust me, I was not. Yes, I chased the ladies and caught quite a few. Smoked that Jamaican jumping weed. Hauled whiskey for a bootlegger. That's just a few things. Called to preach. 
called to preach and ran ran from, from college ran, I thought the Marine Corps I could run from God but he was at Paris Island too 1968 don't want it but the night called in 68 but finally preached my first sermon in 1972 cry loud spare not Lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people, like I'm doing right now, their transgressions in the house of Jacob, their sin. It's not always what we want to do. It's what God wants us to do. I'm not into crowds, but I have to deal with what I'm not into. I pretty much stayed to myself. Well, me and whatever I was doing, but that's, that's a, I ain't telling you everything. Uh, he said, confess your faults, not all your sins. I ain't going to be that. No, no, uh -uh. no, 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 no. But what I'm saying is, the gift is in you. And if you feel a, feel a spirit, if, you, if, if something is just bothering you, neglect not the gift that's, that is in you. Try it. If that's not your gift. That's a God. I was. That's. I see. That's. That's not. What you want for me. That was my thoughts, not yours. Talk to him again. Talk to him again. I did not know that I would be gifted. Yes, I feel like I'm gifted in teaching. That's. This is not. This is not something I want to do. Some of you don't know. I. I <laughs> Y'all know what a 45 record is? Those little platinum. I put out a 45 in, what was it, was it 19, 1976 with, with the Atlanta Youth Choir, the Solid Rock. I thought I was going to rock, but no, that wasn't what he wanted. That's not what he wanted. It's not what we see, it's what God says. Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Now, I told you they're not talents. And <laughs> and you don't have to be like anybody else. You do not have to be like anybody else. You got a football team whose players all want to play quarterback. <laughs> they will. They would have you. You uh, uniformity, but not unity. Everybody can't play quarterback. You want my position? Go through what I've been through. Yet, yeah. oh Lord Jesus Christ. Th those, if everybody wanted to, to play quarterback, they could not function as a team. Why? Because everybody wants to play the same position. That's why there are varieties of gifts. That mean, varieties mean, means uh, apportionments, allotments, distributions. God distributes gifts to those he knows can handle it. Oh, God, help me. What's the next one? Uh... Go back to five. Go back. Go go back to verse five. There are varieties of ministries. You might it not be, not be so much a gift as a ministry. God gives His gifts to be used in varieties of ministries. There's a gift in that ministry, and and. It's not manifest in, in, in every Christian the same way. God knows. God knows. I do not want to teach young children. Oh, Lord, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But there are folk that are gifted to teach children. I teach those that are aged, those that that are have reached adulthood, adulthood, and yes, even 
some that have their doctors now. And God has allowed me to do that. So, so spiritual gifts are not giving us badges. Or <laughs> Let me turn this light on so I can read. So I can read. They're not badges. They're not for self edification. I'm so sick of all these folk sitting up looking proud. Preach, preacher. Don't do that to me. Don't, don't, I, don't, 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 don't do that. That doesn't sit well with me. I'm trying to help people. Because the loss, there is something called a service gift. A service gift. You know, how many folk have you helped? How many folk have you served? You, I, I saw, I saw something. I believe on one of your posts where you gave to others. God gives gifts to us, but for other folk. You understand what I just said? He gives gifts to us, but he don't want us to keep it. It's for other folk. And each of us have a gift, but we're stewards, meaning they are loaned to us. They are loaned to us, but they belong to him. They belong to God, like you belong to God. Ah. <sighs> The manifestation. The manifestation. We're going to end with this one. Look at, go back to verse 7. To each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To help other folk. It, uh, God is the source of spiritual gifts. Every spiritual gift. We, we don't, we don't. What's that song? Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye the Lord that he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. Okay. Enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving to his course with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. God gives gifts. All spiritual gifts come from God. And we are obligated to utilize the gifts. The gifts. Sometimes it's monetary. Sometimes it's spiritual. And if, if somebody tells you they have the gift of healing, there's no such enemy. There are gifts of healings. By that I mean... <laughs> we can pray... But there's not necessarily a physical healing that's involved. It's for the saving of soul. The, the gifts of, of healings is inclusive of, of, of uh, I call them general practitioners because, because there ain't but one doctor, that's Jesus. Uh, the, those that do transplants, those that, 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 that are helping you with cancer. How about a buffering? How about, how about a Tylenol? Those are gifts of healings. Uh, comforting folk at funerals. That's one of the gifts of healings, comforting. That's, that's the manifestation. The, the Holy Spirit makes things known. Now, I'm going to say this at 7 o'clock. When the church ministers his gifts as it should. Christians will receive greater blessings. We're going to talk about that. We're going. To, we'll talk about that Friday. This this is getting deeper than I than I even imagined. But I have a best friend, and no, I'm not going, going to give you their name. That's a gift. I've been comforted. Through words, through laughter, through craziness, 
It's a gift. Everybody can't talk to Bobby Brown. Everybody don't understand Bobby Brown, but the, the Lord gave this individual the gift to straighten me up when necessary. I can't have no pity parties. That's a gift. But at the, at the same time, if you came at me the way this individual came at me, you, you probably get your feelings hurt because this individual don't play. That's a gift. How you treat individuals depends on the Holy Spirit that is in you. Is he in you? Gifted. Father God, I thank you for this moment. For these people that uh, waited patiently for me to come on. I, Lord, I, I, <laughs> I'm so thankful. I saw that 77 were waiting. Some, some, some don't put their names on. But I'm, I'm thankful, Lord, for those that are with me. And Father, stir up the pure minds. The gifts that is in them. Reveal it, Lord, beginning this moment, because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure some, some of them haven't really even thought about it, and, and the, because Lord, you are, you have given us many things to do, and and some are things of the spirit, some some are, are, are things in monetary helpers and aiding the sick and and you know, visiting nursing facilities. A word of wisdom, Father. What, however you choose, reveal it to them, Lord. This week, this week, this week, this week, in the name of Jesus, Lord. But this week, I mean, within seven days. This is Wednesday. Seven is the number we recognize as perfect and complete. In seven days, let these folk know that they are gifted what you want, want, want them and us to do and manifest yourself. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There might be one listening tonight that has not received Jesus Christ in the free pardon of your sins. I'm going to show you the simplicity of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins and confess with your mouth and you'll be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's not about a bunch of noise, not, not a bunch of hoopla, not, not a, a, a lot of sounds, but it's by grace are you saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It's the gift of God. A gift, a gift you don't have to beg for. You just, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock, and the door should be open. Did you notice I used three letters, A-S-K? A, -A ask. S, seek. K, knock. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be open. Will you receive him as your Savior and Lord this moment? This moment. Confess to him that I, I, I am a sinner, but I accept your forgiveness. I want to see you in peace. Today is your day of salvation. Harden not your heart. God bless you. I will see you Friday, the beginning of the Sabbath, 6 o'clock, our Friday, 6 o'clock, our Saturday is the Sabbath. It's the seventh day. That's the reason I come on at 6 o'clock purposely, the, which is the Jewish Sabbath. God bless you. Love you guys.